the altitude. Uh, we do that at North Las Vegas. Uh, we'll lean, uh, peak the engine before we take off using the mixture control. Make sure that uh, the engine is running at, at peak RPM uh, during our run-up process, which we do before we take off every time. So basically, uh, you know, we can uh, do our calculation before we even get in the airplane and then decide if flying is a wise idea. And also, uh, you know, if you look like your max takeoff weight is getting up there, maybe you need to back off on the fuel uh, and plan uh, more stops. Uh, uh, make sure that uh, you do the calculations based on the weight of your passengers and the weight of the baggage and use your pilot's operating handbook for that aircraft. Some aircraft can handle more weight than others. Um, you don't want to get your center of gravity too far aft because that's going to increase your stall speed and make it very dangerous. And uh, having it too far forward is not good either because when you pull the power back, the nose is going to drop and uh, find yourself doing wheelbarrow landings. Uh, you won't be able to get the aircraft stalled properly, and it just uh, it won't be a good day for you. So, you know, having, having your weight and balance calculations done before you get in the aircraft based on the load of that airplane is something that you do every time you fly. Although we have a tendency to kind of get a feel for it, you really should calculate it every time because every aircraft has a moment fore and aft that it's going to allow you to be safe in, so you really need to calculate that every time. Uh, it's just really, really important to be safe. Too many accidents out there. Uh, we see people losing engines on takeoff, and uh, you know if they're not loaded properly, then the aircraft can stall much quicker. Uh, you know you got to get that stick forward and get the nose down quicker. You, so that you don't stall in uh, high temperature. And uh, landing approaches have to be uh, different in higher temperatures. Uh, you really need uh, more speed and more runway to compensate on high temperature days. Whereas in uh, days that are cool, uh, you know, if you're flying by yourself, you'll find that you actually have to land the airplane slower than you normally would because it's going to the air is uh, uh, supports lift better <laughs> when you're uh, on cooler days. So winter flying is typically always better than summer flying, uh, just because of the density of the air. I think Mel's coming up with a question, Mel. Anybody else have a question? Yeah, it will have an effect on uh, uh, ground effect. Uh, you're going to have a tendency to not be able to get out of ground effect if uh, if you've uh, you're sitting close to max takeoff weight uh, as you lift the aircraft off. If you're sitting close to max takeoff weight with a uh, high density altitude, you're going to have a hell of a time getting out of ground effect. And uh, same thing with uh, someone that's doing it on a cold day when you're uh, if you're a little bit fast uh, coming in on a cold day uh, you're flying the performance numbers of your aircraft for uh, standard temperature and pressure but you still may find yourself floating down the runway because the air is uh, the density is uh, below uh, uh, 
what it normally would be instead of being above like on a warm day. So you may find yourself staying in ground effect a lot longer than, uh, than you would on a, uh, on a normal day. So yeah, it does have an effect on, on, uh, on floating or ground effect as you will. Of course, the, the effect is different uh, depending on whether you're in a high wing airplane or a low wing. Uh, low wings uh, aircraft that cushion or ground effect occurs sooner than it does with a high wing aircraft. So all of that you have to take into account too. The idea is to uh, get that airplane and fly it properly for the day's conditions. And if you do that right, you're going to grease every landing uh, once you understand uh, the effect of density altitude. So, okay, any other questions on density altitude? All right. Now, uh, you know, we've been doing some building, and uh, I wanted to uh, talk about building a little bit, but I want to I wanna talk about building in terms of what you guys would like to see because you folks are here, and I know some of you are already building and texturing, and uh, all of us are still learning every day on uh, different uh, issues, textures, uh, uh, building techniques and tools for building. Uh, you, this week I discovered a new tool called uh, uh, Prim Oven, which I haven't actually had a chance to take out of the box. It's uh, a lot simpler to use than Sculpt Studio, but it uh, and it's limited in terms of what you can do with it. But there are uh, since it's quicker uh, and you get reasonable. Uh, level of detail when you're done with the sculpty and it has some abilities in terms of texturing that uh, sculpt studio doesn't offer so uh, you may want to go on their site and look at their video and uh, or find somebody that's already using it like 10 bears over here or uh, our uh, pilot mcbride our friend from down under although he says we're from down under uh, anyway, uh, yeah, take a look at that product. It's a new one. Uh, is there anything that the folks that are here now would like to see uh, specifically in terms of building? Because I don't want to uh, beat something to death, uh, you know, or show you something that you already know, because uh, I can do it on any level. 